Good morning and welcome once more as we gather on this Lord's Day, as we gather in this virtual way to worship together. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent. We are going through Lent at quite a speed, it seems, this year, but maybe our whole year has been very quick. When I think back that this Sunday last year was the last Sunday we actually gathered in church under normal circumstances. It's quite hard to think that it's been a whole year, 52 weeks, that we have not been able to gather in normal ways in church, even though we had a brief period in November and December where we could gather, but in very restricted terms. The recent government um, announcements indicate that perhaps worship can um, you know, um, resume in places of worship, but again with um, Restricted numbers, social distancing, no singing, face masks must be worn. And I'm within two minds whether to open up the church to do that or just to wait perhaps another month or so when maybe the restrictions are further eased and we can gather in a more normal way where we can have the choir, we can have the music group, we can sit with our friends together, hear the news in a very normal way. So what I would like to ask those who are watching in a virtual way anyway is perhaps just to give me some feedback of what you think about returning to church and under the current restrictions or should we just maybe wait a month or two at the very most, I would hope, before we can meet in a more normal, gathered way for worship. And if you could please maybe just drop me a a line on my email just to see if you want to share your views, just to help me come to a decision and to understand what people are feeling and it would be really appreciated if all those who are watching this morning um, could think about it and if you feel strong enough for one way or another just let me know it would be very very helpful and a warm welcome to all those who have gathered this morning no matter when we return to church we will continue to live stream so those who are quite far away will still be able to join us in worship as we, as you know, last year we raised some funds to put live streaming within the church. So live streaming will continue as well as meeting in a physical way. So this morning I welcome you and I want you to welcome all those that you're with and those that you're thinking about, especially today where it's Mother's Day, Mothering Sunday, when we're thinking about mothers and we'll be um, only special um, folk in our lives and uh, We'll be talking a little bit more about that later. So I now invite you all to say good morning to each other in whatever way you can. So good morning to you. Our call to worship. For God so loved the world with the love of a creator. For God so loved the world with the love of a redeemer. For God so loved the world with a love that lasts forever. So let us come together this morning in love and peace together as one. And let us worship God. And let us do so by sharing in that hymn, hymn 623, Gather us in this special day. Gather us in. Shall call your sons and your daughters. 
this morning, um, we welcome a, a new member to the worship team, uh, Brian Drummond. Brian is in training. He's a reader, an ancient office within the church. And Brian is a reader in training and he's, he'll be with us here in South Leith for at least until Christmas. And for those that um, have joined us in Coffee and Chat, which I encourage you all today to do as well, um, has met, met um, Brian last week. And Brian this morning is going to lead us in prayer. And so I'm now going to ask Brian to lead us in the gathering prayer. Over to you, Brian. Thank you, Ian. And thanks to all of you for allowing me to participate in your service today. As we turn now to pray and to speak to God, let's also listen for what God might be saying to us. Let us pray. Lord God, in the Psalms, we learn from David that you formed each of us in our mother's wombs. And so we praise you for creating us. God, through the prophet Isaiah, you say that just as a mother comforts her child, so you will comfort us. And we thank you for your tender care for us throughout our lives. Jesus, in the Bible, John tells us that you said that to enter your kingdom, we need to be born of the Spirit, as well as being born of our mothers. Holy Spirit, thank you that from you we receive your life, just as from our biological mothers we receive biological life. Jesus, Matthew and Luke tell us that you said that often you wanted to gather people together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but people were not willing. And we are sorry for how unwilling we are to live the way you want us to. Holy Spirit, teach us how you want us to live and give us the power to live that way, your way. God, in the Bible, we read that you ask Job, who gave birth to ice and who gave birth to frost? And we know that everything on this earth comes from you, including the ice and the frost. And so we're sorry for the way that we continue to live in a way that damages your the physical environment that you've given us and that as a result of our way of life many across your world suffer. Forgive us and show us how our lives need to change to end this ongoing damage and suffering. Jesus, you told us that when we pray, we should say, Father. And so we pray now, we all say together the words that you taught us. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ian. Thank you, Brian, for journey through Lent. It's from John chapter 3. 
And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Amen. And may God add his blessing to these, his holy words, and be honor, all honour and praise. This morning we've got some music for reflection, and being Mother and Sunday, I, this is a very, I'm sure quite a well-known hymn, but I thought it was very appropriate, and the music for reflection and, and, and what we're going to share in shortly is a, a different way of um, listening to this hymn. The hymn is Hymn 117, if you want to look at the words, and it's Mothering God, You Gave Us Birth. Today, as I said earlier, is the fourth Sunday in Lent. And it's a Sunday where here in the UK we celebrate it with Mothering Sunday. It's a day, I'm sure, where many, if they can, would visit that special mum in their life. And that special mum may well be their, their mother or their grandmother, a godmother, an aunt, or someone who has, in so many ways, been a mother to them. 
But I suppose today, with all the restrictions that are still in place, there won't be so many opportunities to do so. However, I do encourage you all this morning to still think about that special mum in your life. Call them. Let them know you're thinking about them. I'm sure the florist vans are dashing around all Leith and Edinburgh, delivering flowers and chocolates to their special mum. And I know here in the manse, Anne is waiting with anticipation of that from her children. And I'm sure they've done the right thing. And I suppose without mothers, it's a bit of an obvious fact, none of us would be here. Mothers throughout generations have all given up so much so that we are nurtured, cared for and grow into the people we are. I certainly only have loving memories of my mother. And I suppose as I gain in years, I appreciate more all that she did for me and the rest of my family. When I look back at times and the words and the guidance she gave me, and the lots of sort of scoldings as well, I can assure you, I don't know where I'd be without my mother. I was no angel And she certainly helped me keep me on the straight path and taught me what was right and wrong and made me, I hope, I know, into the person I am today. We always have to thank that mothers have done so much for us and have given up so much. We should always be thankful for them. This last week, I'm sure many of you are aware that we had International Women's Day at the beginning of the week and throughout the week there's been a lot of focus upon that about women and and then just yesterday about that Virgil for that uh, young lady that was murdered in the south of England. And I suppose this week when I've been thinking about this sermon and what I'm going to talk about and thinking about International Women's Day and a lot of attention has been put on about equality and justice for women, and so it should be. Yet when you look below the headlines of what we've been looking at this last week, there are some sad facts, really, that perhaps have not been given the attention they need, especially when we think about mothers on this Mothering Sunday. It may be a surprise to you, or maybe not, that each year over 300,000, 300,000 women die through complications in childbirth. Complications that good health provision and support can be avoided. 70% of all those deaths, that's over 210,000, are in sub-Saharan Africa, over 60,000 in South Asia and India and Bangladesh. That's over 830 deaths every day of women as they try to bring a newborn child into the world, die. And it does make you think how lucky we are in the UK. Because in the UK, those that die through complications in childbirth are 75 a year. Still too many. But when you think about in other places where there's 830 a day, it puts our health service and what we do here into perspective. You may well ask, what's this got to do with the passage we heard read by myself earlier from John's Gospel? Well, the central theme in that passage for me is the words that God so loved the world. Not just the rich part of the world, where health services are much more advanced and provision is fairer and more accessible. But God so loved the whole world. And in a way he sent his son into it to save it from itself. To show that we are all God's children. That God is as much a mother figure as God is portrayed as a father. A God was there to nurture, to help us, if you like, to send light, to, if you like, rescue ourselves from ourselves. John, in that passage, in some ways, 
can be read in a very negative way because he's almost condemning the world. But I suppose he's saying that because the world in his day did reject Jesus. It stood in opposition to Jesus and his followers and the teaching and the example he gave. God so loved the world, he sent his son to show us how wrong we were and what we do and what we stand for at that time. It was an act of unconditional love. The same love in a way that a mother gives to bring us all into the world. And this act of godly love is further explained by Jesus as he goes on in the passage to talk of the consequences of this act of unconditional love for all humanity. And he talks in dualistic tones, if you like, the contrast between children of light and children of darkness, of lovers of light and lovers of darkness. That in his time, there were too many who lived in darkness, who were only interested in their own lives and not the plight of others. They were selfish, self-seeking, only interested in what they could do. And we have to ask, really, in this 21st century, has anything changed? That statistic I gave of the mothers who have died unnecessarily, an example of who and what we in the rich first world can and need to rectify. And then you look at something else. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. Here in the UK, we've managed to vaccinate over almost over 40% of our adult population and 100% of the most vulnerable within it. This is good news. And thanks need to be given to all the health workers, the nurses, the vaccinators, those that have manufactured the vaccine, got it out, distributed it. And we have to give thanks and praise for that. But again, when we look at other parts of the world, and again look at sub-Saharan Africa, and look at Zambia, who we have a very strong connection with here in South Leith Parish Church. It's not 40% who have been vaccinated there. It's 0.1 of a percent, virtually nil. You know, as we approach nearly half of our adult population being vaccinated, in other parts of the world, the poorest parts of the world, a world that God loves just as much as he loves us, the number is almost zero. And what does that say to us as Christians in the richest part of the world? What does that show to Jesus who talks to us about living in the light or living in darkness? As he says in verse 19, people who love darkness rather than light because of our deeds. It's not what we think, it's what we do it shows whether we live in light or darkness. And as people of God so loved who gave his son to show us the light, the right way. It says that those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. That complete contrast between the two, that in our deeds we show whether we seek light or darkness. And I don't just mean that individually. You know, Jesus certainly was aiming at that, but also for society and communities, for nations, for the world that God so loved. God so loved the world, not just the privileged parts, but all the world and all within it. And today we have to ask, in our world, which we are part of, are we seekers of light on this Mothering Sunday? Do we want to bring light in to those mothers' lives that are so fearful, perhaps, of bringing a child into the world in case it all goes wrong because of just where they live? Not because it couldn't be different, but because of where they live. Are we the seekers of light? We want to bring a ray of hope to all those who are longing for relief, relief like ourselves to get out of lockdown, to be safe, to go out and meet our mothers to mix again and do all the things we want to do. 
but up with them have no access to the vaccine. Where is the justice, the fairness? Where is the love that God speaks of for the world in that? During Lent, we are asked to journey to seek the way of Christ. On this Mothering Sunday, I hope and pray that all who have gathered in this virtual way are true seekers of the light and will pray and do whatever they can to share that love that God talks about in what we do and how we do it. Because the world does need that light, does need that justice, does need that sharing and caring, and we can be part of it. So I ask you all to think about that today. Think about mothers throughout the world who are worried about themselves and their children in this pandemic. To think of all expecting mothers who are fearful that perhaps something might go wrong. Give them your prayers. Give them your hope. Give them your light. Because God so loved the world, he gave his only son to share that light. Let us be seekers of light and not of darkness. Amen. Okay, now we're joined by the Reverend Jessie, who's been with us, and uh, she's going to bring our prayers for others this morning. A prayer for others and ourselves. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving God, it is such a blessing and a gift to come to you in prayers. Although we are in different homes, in different continents, through different time zones, yet we feel your presence uniting us with the full embrace of your love. We want to be careful to thank you again for your immeasurable love, your infinite grace and your unfailing faithfulness. It is in this confidence that we come to you, knowing that if we ask anything in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you hear us. Loving God, we pray that you meet us in all the places and situations in which we need help. For Lord, we do need you in every area of our lives. Meet us as we continue to find ways of being a thoughtful and compassionate church here in South Lake Parish, reaching out to one another, breaking the silence of loneliness and providing care wherever that is needed. Meet us as we gather in virtual worship or virtual coffee breaks. Meet us as Penny leaves the team to provide breakfast to the homeless and as the food bank team continues its work with the poor. Meet us whether alone or in company of our families and friends. Your presence gives life. Meet us as easing of lockdown restrictions are being contemplated and as governments make difficult decisions about healthcare provisions and vaccinations. Meet with schools as children return physically, as parents struggle with homeschooling, and as children cope with a pandemic that escapes description. Meet us as healthcare workers continue to risk their lives to provide care for the sick and dying, especially those suffering from the effects of COVID. Meet with families caring for the aged, the vulnerable and the sick. Ever present God, meet us so we never forget that you do hear us when we pray. You heard our prayers for the vaccine. You watch over us. You heal us. You allow the plants to grow in season and the birds to echo their songs. You have always met us, so we, we know you will not stop meeting us in all the ways we need to feel and know your presence. So Lord, we thank you. Please accept our prayers, 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Jesse, for sharing that prayer with us. And before we hear our final hymn, which is Tell Out My Soul, just to remind you all that after the service, you can come and join us in a Zoom coffee and chat. The link is the same for each week. But if you don't have the link, just please drop me an email even today and I'll pick it up and send you the link so you can join in some coffee and chat after the service. All are welcome. And it's good just to see a few familiar faces as we chat away and just share our week and how things are. So please, if you can, you're more than welcome to join us after the service. As I said, our closing hymn this morning is Tell Out My Soul. And thank you once more for joining in worship with us. And thank you for the technical team behind the scenes who can make all this possible. So thank you, Ian. So our closing hymn, hymn 286, Tell Out my soul. Let us now go out to love, assured of God's love for you. Let us go out to serve, assured of God serving alongside you. Let us go out to bless, assured of God's blessing on you. For God so loved the world. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you all, within you all, around you all, this day and evermore. Amen.